Welcome to Hemoglobin Arena. Today's experimental challenge, isolate and purify lactate dehydrogenase from bovine muscle tissue. This week's challenger, Ina Kirate, boasts her skill in using biochemical kits, doesn't waste time in tedious steps, and likes instant ramen while watching daytime sopras all day. Challenger Kirate will be facing ionic biochemist Dicer, specially trained at the University of California, Los Angeles, and is notorious for chewing up challengers and spitting them out like a bunch of oligos. I'm Don G, and I'm joined by our judges, Mistress Entropy and Dr. Beckman. Now let's see who will rise to the top here on Ionic Biochemist. Again! And they're off. Biochemist Dicer chooses her specimen of meat wisely. Kirate doesn't look so confident in picking her medallion of beef. Right you are, Mistress Entropy. If one had a choice, it would be wise to avoid pieces that have excessive marbling. That would mean less muscle tissue and more fat and connective tissue. That would make it difficult to cut out the non-muscle tissue, leading to a lower yield of enzyme. Ooh, aren't those pieces too big? Yes, they are. Biochemist Dicer cuts her meat into smaller chunks both to easily remove the non-muscle tissue. With the smaller size, she'll be able to weigh 8 grams much more easily. Oh, it looks like she has some trouble weighing out her 8 grams. That's right, Mistress Entropy. She had to go back to her bench and get her scissors to cut those pieces of meat off. That's wasting precious time. Did you also notice that she had not been keeping his sample on ice whenever possible? She didn't even put it back on ice. Right. And getting back to the higher temperatures, this will lead to higher levels of degradation as there's more thermal energy to fuel processes like oxidation and proteolytic digestion than if the sample was kept over ice whenever possible. And it looks like Master T.A. is upset with Challenger Kirate. Indeed it does. Master T.A. will likely be deducting protocol points from her total score. Biochemist Dicer, although taking a bit more time, carefully cut her beef over ice and will gain ground with a higher yield in the end. Dr. Beckman? Yes? Is it necessary to weigh out exactly 8 grams? No, Miss Entropy. She should weigh it out around 8 grams plus or minus 0.1 grams, as that should not exceed the efficacy of the later purification steps. Now Biochemist Dicer is cutting up her weighed muscle sample into smaller pieces, so the blending step will be more effective in lysing the cells. And she's doing this over ice. Oh, I see where Biochemist Dicer gets her name. The challenger is now obtaining her phosphate buffer, in which she will add it to her beef. Oh, isn't Challenger Curate getting the wrong phosphate buffer? That's correct. She should be using the cold phosphate buffer. The room temperature phosphate buffer is used for dilutions of unknowns for the assays. It should not be used for the blending step. Once again, increased thermal energy will cause proteins to degrade. Oh, I feel bad for Master TA. Well, Ionic Biochemist Dicer is really on top of this. She's obtained her ice-cold phosphate buffer and has moved ahead by grabbing her chilled blender cup and getting her next step ready. Looks like Challenger Dicer is ready to do some more shopping. Oops, I meant chopping. Ha ha ha, I think you mean Biochemist Dicer. But shopping is absolutely correct, since Dicer is all money. Challenger Karate is still pumping out 50 mils of room temperature phosphate buffer. I wonder what will happen to Challenger Karate's yield and purity. Ostensibly, her errors will result in a lower starting amount of enzyme relative to biochemist dices. And quite possibly, she will have a lower specific activity since enzyme activity will be more affected than unknown's ability to bind to the protein. Now biochemist dicer has placed her meat and coal phosphate buffer in the blender cup. She had secured the lid on top so as not to lose any sample and is blending away. These are great industrial blenders, but those lids are hard to replace. They are not disposable. That's correct. Here in Hemoglobin Arena, all equipment must be washed and returned. Nothing, including dilutions and samples, should be immediately thrown out without careful consideration or even consultation with Master TA. Competitors can lose points for any missing items. Biochemist Dicer has now shut off her blender and is waiting 30 seconds before blending again. She is mindful that the blender cup could heat up if she had extended that blending time. Looks like Challenger Karate is not ready for blending. She is having a bit more trouble with the lids. Those lids are a little tricky. And we 
you're back! Yes, and Challenger Kirate has gained some time by blending two minutes straight, while Biochemist Dicer has taken twice as long with their intermittent burst of blending. Oh, it looks like a delicious strawberry smoothie. Ew, what was that? That, my dear, was probably the fat, connective tissue, and incompletely blended pieces of meat, all due to her poor sample preparation. Dr. Beckman, why is she pouring her samples into two non-disposable centrifuge tubes? She's doing that because at least she knows that she cannot spin the complete volume in these centrifuge tubes as it will spill out if they were full during the spin. Also, she has to balance each tube during the spin so as not to damage the centrifuge. Oh, and Biochemist Dicer doesn't look like she has any of that nasty stuff. That's correct. She probably shook around the blender cup between spins, and it looks like her complete cutting beforehand did the job. Oh, isn't it just fab how Biochemist Dicer takes the time to clean up after herself? And certainly Master TA will be deducting further points from Challenger Karate's total evaluation. Just look at the mess. The competitors are now ready for their first purification step, centrifugation. Behold the Beckman J2HS. This high performance centrifuge has a maximum speed of 21,000 revolutions per minute and 200 RPM speed control. With the right rotor, you can spin up to 3,000 milliliters of solution with this 220 volt, 656 pound monster centrifuge. You can spend less time waiting for separations, reduce degradation with the built in refrigeration unit, and feel comfortable and secure around the kids knowing that the door cannot be open while the rotor is spinning. Challenger Karate is balancing a crude homogenate on the double beam balance. That doesn't look balanced at all. That's right. She has to use a transfer pipette and transfer some volume from the heavier tube to the lighter tube. Taking little by little is the best way making this step short and painless. Don G, does that look labeled to you? No, it does not. Challenger Karate should have used a sharpie to indicate that it's her crude extract. And Don G, she should not use tape, because once the tube is centrifuged, the force of centrifugation will push the tape to the bottom of the tube, and it will get stuck in the rotor. It's far from brilliant, if you ask me. Challenger! Slots 1 and 13. Master TA has now just told the Challenger which slot numbers of the rotor that her samples are in. I hope Challenger was writing those slot numbers down. Now Biochemist Dicer is ready to balance. It also looks like she did a careful job in pouring her samples to an equivalent level. Oh, she measures with such precision. It's quite easy when you have the samples almost balanced. Look, it's properly labeled. Yes. When multiple researchers are spinning their samples in the centrifuge, it's important to know which slots your samples are in so the Master TA can easily I distribute like them out later. Slots 2 and 14. Got it. And I like how she writes it down. Master TA will not allow any of the researchers to operate the centrifuge to avoid any misuse. In fact, he is careful in accelerating the spin by increasing the speeds by 2,000 RPMs at a time. He listens and watches the centrifuge to ensure that the rotor is spinning in a balanced fashion. An unbalanced rotor will cause the centrifuge to shake and make knocking noises. It's a lot like a clothes washer shutting down during a spin cycle. I should point out that the important goal is to remove the insoluble debris such as cellular membranes or organelles, which are denser than the aqueous solution. Such particles will have a greater force of centrifugation over the force of buoyancy because they have a greater mass than the mass of the solvent that it will displace. Challenger Karate is preparing her cheesecloth filter for removing the less dense and soluble material. But it looks like she incorrectly placed her cheesecloth filter in that glass funnel. I wonder if she studied at that other SoCal school. Haha, <laughs> I know what you mean, Mistress Entropy. Look how biochemist Dicer has probably set up her filter. Also, she has prepared her salting out glassware with a wet ice bath and a beaker placed in the middle with a clean magnetic stir bar. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Margaritas! Woohoo! And the spin is complete. Biochemist Dicer has quickly obtained her samples. Dr. Beckman, what's that stuff floating up top? That's insoluble fibrous tissue, which likely contains proteoglycan fibers that are less dense than the solvent. Biochemist Dicer is ready to cant her sample. Look how the pellet is rather large and strewn across one side of the tube. 
While she decants the supernatant through the filter, she keeps the pellet at the top side of the tube so the supernatant does not accidentally wash out the pellet during the pouring. Okay. Biochemist Dicer is also carefully measuring her total volume for her purification table calculations. The volume should include the testing aliquot volume, even though that volume is lost because it is saved for assays. Right you are, Dr. Beckman, and Biochemist Dicer is now about to hand over the test aliquot to the assay team. This is an exciting day, and the assay team is equally important to competitors, as they need to know whether their crude extract contains enzyme, which should be the first monitoring assay run during the lab. Protein assays will be run at the end of the lab when you have all your test aliquots. Oh, Don G, what's that white powder? Why, that's ammonium sulfate. Even though the assay team has not confirmed that there is an enzymatic activity in the crude, biochemist Dicer is saving time by measuring out the needed ammonium sulfate for her 40% saturated salting out step. Remember, saturation is not a concentration, but a value relative to how much salt you add to a volume to achieve 100% saturation. That's correct, Dr. Beckman. Looks like Challenger Kurate is taking a hint and weighing out her salt for her 40% step as well. Ah, she should be using a spatula, and not her finger. It appears that the assay team has confirmed activity for Biochemist Dicer, and now she is ready to proceed. And Biochemist Dicer already has her crude in the beaker, and spinning the solution gently to avoid surface air denaturation. Oh, that makes me dizzy. So true, but that doesn't affect Biochemist Dicer. Watch how she slowly adds the salt to the crude extract in small increments. Biochemist Dicer will add the salt slowly to the crude extract over a 10 minute period to avoid the creation of concentrated microenvironments that may lead to unintended LDH precipitation. For us? What is she looking for? Biochemist Dicer is actually looking for salt crystals that might be undissolved at the bottom of her beaker. The solution may actually appear cloudy, but that's the aggregates that are primarily comprised of fats and lipids. Undissolved crystals would be at the bottom and look crystalline. She's checking to make sure that they're all dissolved before she lets the 40% saturated sample sit for 10 minutes on ice without stirring. Here's the Challenger's 40% saturated solution. This is really making me dizzy now. Me too. And this looks problematic with all the incorporation of air leading to greater chances of unfolding due to surface air denaturation. Where is she? Shouldn't she be working off her protocol? Well, it looks like Biochemist Dicer is ready to spin her 40% saturated sample. While Challenger Karate appears to not have a good control of the situation. And she just poured her sample too quickly, losing her stir bar into her 40% sample tube. She will have some additional loss of sample with that transfer. We are back, and Biochemist Dicer has her 40% supernatant. She carefully inspects the size of the pellets. A careful scientist will estimate the approximate mass of the pellet. Qualitatively, this one looks like it's about the size of a 200 milligram tablet squished to the side of the tube. Challenger Karate has also completed her second spin and is measuring and aliquoting her test sample. That is no way to treat your assay team. Certainly, it's not a good sign to lose your professionalism when lab work gets stressful. Well, it looks like her results are in. Oh, I think it's bad news. She doesn't look too happy. With all those errors, it's not surprising she had poor enzyme recovery. She should have had similar activity to her crude, using the same dilution folds, but she likely had a zero to no activity in her 40% soup. Oh, is Challenger Curata starting over with the 40%? She could try to resuspend her 40% pellet and repeat the 40% salt addition, but with all her errors, that could have led to complete loss of activity. She may need to make a new crude extract and start from the beginning. Well, with Challenger Kurate having to repeat this step, and with such a bleak potential outcome, it is clear that Biochemist Dicer has delivered another knockout punch.
Well, that does it for this round of Ionic Biochemist. Master TA is clearly pleased with Biochemist Dicer's performance. She saved all the purified samples and test aliquots and gave them to Master TA for safekeeping. She cleaned up all her equipment with soap and water and returned all non-disposable equipment without loss or damage. Although Master TA was disappointed with the Challenger's lackluster performance, he can stand proud knowing that his Ionic Biochemist continues to reign supreme.